Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, we are going to continue with our course Precision Oncology with another session, the Hallmarks of Cancer, the part 2. In the earlier class, we have really discussed about the hallmarks of cancer. Exactly, we have defined what exactly our hallmarks are and then we went on to say what, what particular trait will definitely lead a normal cell to a cancer cell and thereby leading towards a progression of tumor. So, we have identified 8, of course, we did not do it. Uh, Johan and uh, uh, Robert Weinberg have done it and we were discussing about their age. But there are another two more which are the vital hallmarks of cancer. We have uh, completed um, uh, discussing the sustaining proliferation, uh, proliferating signaling, then how do cancers evade growth uh, uh, suppressors and then uh, how do their uh, uh, resist cell death by apoptosis. So, we have discussed the very, very important what are the growth factors for a carcinogenic uh, for a now that will uh, induce the formation of a tumor tumorogenesis. So, there are many lines of evidence that indicate that tumorogenesis is a multi-step process and these steps reflect genetic alteration. So, basically cancer is a genetic disease which we have discussed and these, these uh, events they drive to the progression of uh, normal human cells into highly malignant cells or turn. So, many types of cancers are uh, diagnosed in hum human population with age dependent instance Impl implicating there are many, uh, se they, there are 7, uh, 4 to 7 rate limiting st uh, stochastic events. So, pathological analysis of this number of organic uh, organ sites with cancer lesions, they, they represent that there are many intermediate steps in uh, in the process through which cells evolve progressively. It is a very progressive, progressive stage from a normal cell stage to a pre-malignant pre stage into an invasive cancer. So, cancer cells have defects in their regulatory circuits that govern normal cell proliferation. This is all what we were discussing in the last class. Just to very much quickly repack, recap where we have uh, uh, left uh, here sustaining uh, proliferative uh, signaling, then evading growth uh, suppressors, then uh, uh, replicative evading the replicative motor we discussed about telomeres, then we discussed about uh, apoptosis. So, this uh, th this is uh, real hallmarks then we discussed about how in each of this particular hallmark we have just uh, we are going to give uh, we have given examples of mechanisms and now we will further see the different uh, further uh, very very important uh, uh, hallmarks the sustained angiogenesis, the tumor uh, invasion and metastasis. Now, what is angiogenesis? So, this plays angiogenesis plays an important role in the development of cancer since it allows for the delivery of uh, uh, oxygen, nutrients and the growth factors as well as t tumor dissemination into the distant organs. So, what happens in, during amniogenesis? There is development of uh, vasculature. What is a vasculature? Basically, it is giving birth to new endothelial cells or vessels and their assembly into tubes that is called, we call it as vasculogenesis. In addition to the uh, to the sprouting that is either this uh, from the existing new vessels branch that is called sprouting angiogenesis or uh, from the existing ones. So, normal vasculature becomes, so after this embryogenesis when the organ is formed and all, usually this there is no need for a new vasculature formation or new vessel formation per se. So, what happens? So, suppose in case in an adult, in case there is, uh, there need to be a new wound healing or for example, in uh, uh, female reproductive cycling, angiogenesis is turned on, but it is only for a transient period when then again it goes turned back. Whereas, in tumor what happens? This uh, the tumor cells will always keep the angiogenic switch on and keep it activated and thereby the normal quiescent vasculature, vasculature will continue to sprout new, uh, new vessels that will help the sustain and expanding of the tumor cells or will help in sustain the neoplastic growth. 
So now what is uh, supposing if you can you inhibit this angiogenesis? It is an important strategy for the prevention of multiple solid tumors that depend on cutting or at least reducing the blood supply to the tumor microgenesis. So these drugs are important part of treatment for some of types of cancer. As a standalone uh, therapy also some tumor angiogenesis can arrest or halt growth but will not eliminate the they may totally not eliminate the tumor. Therefore, uh, anti-angiogenic drugs are always used in combination with another anti-cancer treatment method like chemotherapy that could lead to be, be uh, lead to being critical for optimum uh, better or patient output. What is angiogenesis? Angiogenesis is a multi-step process which involves endothelial cells with, and it uh, angiogenesis includes initiation, migration, tube formation and uh, differentiation. Here we can see. So basically the oxygen and the nutrients supplied by the vasculature are uh, crucial for the cell function and uh, survival. So that is well, so during organogenesis the closeness is ensured by coordinated growth of vessels and parenchyma. Once a tissue is formed the growth of new blood vessels, the process of angiogenesis is transitory. It is not like every time you would need it as I mentioned before. So this, so but um, so usually, uh, but when, uh, but when in an uh, suppose if the proliferation is aberrant or altered in cases like in your cancer, so initially they may not, they will lack the angiogenic uh, ability. But uh, further on, in order to progress for these tumors to progress to larger size to incipient uh, neoplasias, the angiogenic ability is retained. So, what is this? The angiogenic factors they uh, factors they contribute to production of uh, endothelial cells, which creates the walls of an existing small blood vessels here, uh, uh, capillary, and the release of these particular factors. So, binding of this uh, factors will go on to the surface uh, receptors, and thereby. Uh, the, there is secretion of enzymes like, such as your uh, matrix metalloprotein that reduce the and destroys your extra uh, cellular matrix here. So then uh, which will further lead to invasion of the matrix division, uh, EC proliferation and then starting of, uh, of uh, uh, the strings of new ECs you know they will organize into hollow tubes such as these and thereby they forming new networks for uh, blood vessels. So, the, as a result your vas vasculogenesis will be forming and here you will have recruitment of uh, uh, pericytes, uh, pericytes and uh, further on matur maturation then differentiation. So, in this mechanisms of in blood vessel for formation you have something called as the uh, sprouting angiogenesis where um, uh, where you know the to the less frequent uh, neovascularization is like formation of new from the new bo bone marrow uh, derived endothelial progenitor cells so and then uh, into susceptible my microvascular growth and vasculogenic uh, mimicry so what are in each this uh, uh, each of this mechanism in the sprouting anesthesia with this is a very well known uh, angiogenesis promoting mechanism which is adapted by tumor cells to induce their own uh, vascularization from pre-existing host capillaries from the ECM that is your extracellular matrix component cells they induce their own vascularization. So from ECM soluble factors and well defined steps as I mentioned before uh, de uh, define uh, sprouting angiogenesis. Now what happens in vessel in interception is like uh, the development of the intravascular growth mechanism of splitting of the pre-existing vessels into new vascular structures like how we see here. This is first described in uh, uh, described in the modeling of lung capillaries. Then you have your uh, vasculogenic mimicry which refers to the ability of some of the tumor cells, um, some of the malignant strains to start de-differentiation process to adapt to multiple cellular phenotypes including endothelial like properties. So, these cells finally converge in de novo vasculogenic like networks composed of red blood cells uh, that are able to contribute to circulation. So, these are the different mechanisms which cancer cells uh, adapt for their own blood vessel vasculogenesis formation. So, during tumor vasculogenesis endothelial EPCs are mobilized 
as uh, as I've shown and recruited in response to several chemokines, cytokines, and growth factors produced by this tumor and the stromal cells. These are also very important. Normal cases, the stromal cells won't produce any of this particular growth factors or cytokines. But whereas upon the stimulus of the tumor cells, upon the growth factors released by the tumor cells, the stromal cells in turn secrete all this particular growth factors which will induce angiogenesis. So, vasculogenesis is also is not only involved in primary or not only involved for the uh, prime metam uh, for uh, giving the nutrients or the oxygen supply to the primary tumor growth. But this vasculogenesis is also important for its distant metagenesis and uh, uh, dissemination of the tumor cell mass. The vessel interruption or uh, the in, uh, intussusceptible microvascular growth whatever we have seen is the development intravascular growth mechanism consisting of sp splitting of the pre-existing cells in vessels into two vascular structures as we have seen before here you can see that from the single thing you have the two vascular structures arising. So now what are the pro uh, angiogenic mediators in tumor angiogenesis? So, this is very very important for this thing. So, you have the several growth factors, you have the small mediators, you have the matrix degrading enzymes, then you have the cytokines, these are the uh, bioactive uh, lipids. So, all this proangiogenic mediators work in the tumor angiogenesis like your VEGFs. So, vegetative endothelial growth factors, I will talk about all this in detail. Some of them like your TGF and all we have already discussed. Then uh, this particular growth factors and your small mediators like your uh, uh, histamine, your nitric oxide, all this you know they will also be, uh, will uh, for work towards uh, promoting the angiogenesis in the tumor cell. Your matrix degrading enzymes, if you recollect in the earlier slide where how we said you know uh, how this uh, uh, particular angiogenesis is formed. So, you have the ma matrix metalloproteins which are very key factors and then your uh, uh, heparinases and then your importantly your cytokines like such as your il your colony stimulating factor 1 and your bio uh, active lipids. So, these are all important ones for the continued uh, for your pro angiogenic uh, e events. So, the for a uh, angiogenic uh, uh, for a vessel formation is uh, to re be required. So, all this particular uh, uh, angio this particular cofactors are important. So, activation of the angiogenic pro uh, process involves the breakdown of Excess LM matrix at different levels for substitution for subsequent endothelial cell invasion and tube formation, as I've shown before. Apart from the role of tumor cells as principal secretors of endothelial cell promoters, the interplay with other stromal cells such as your pericytes is also very, very, very important for neo vessel stability. So, when exactly your Angiogenic switch occurs prior to tumor formation in this three transgenic mouse models of tumorogenesis is demonstrated in this particular site. So, how do we know that a particular uh, uh, grow factor is for a pro-angiogenetic or anti-angiogenetic? So, people have studied several groups have used transgenic mice models wherein where you over express this particular oncogene or you, you uh, knock out this particular oncogene. So, they so transgenic mice carrying this dominant oncogenes or knockouts of your even your uh, tumor suppressor genes they are being uh, widely used of course not only for angiogenesis even for other uh, any other hallmarks or any other to, uh, to identify a growth factor for its, its key role in the mechanism study of your uh, in cancer biology. So, this transgenic mites are very important. So, now here they have done three transgenic this is a very important uh, this is a very uh, good study which I am representing here to highlight to show how this angiogenesis uh, which is switched on and what state. So, they have done uh, three uh, transgenic uh, mouse models your uh, islet cell cell carcinoma, your dermal uh, fibrocarcinoma and epidermal squamous cell carcinoma. In all three uh, models the uh, there is the extensive vascularization and uh, uh, ongoing uh, angiogenesis has been apparent here if you see in all these three models this uh, your particular uh, angiogenesis is very much apparent in towards the end stage. But where exactly is it coming up? 
So, uh, so this in that particular the tag oncogene model, normal oncogene express, uh, uh, expressing in the normal oncogene expressing islets, hyper uh, plastic islets populated by, pro here you have the uh, hyperplastic islets which are populated by the proliferating cells, here you can see. So, so with the histologic uh, uh, hallmarks of your CIS, CIS is carcinoma in situ. So, uh, so here you would see this uh, at this particular stage, you can see that uh, new blood vessel growth has been activated. So, your angiogenic switch is on here and then uh, this uh, so the which are in the, so thereby and then here this will continue into your solid tumor also. Now coming back to the second transgenic model where you know the uh, which is also a multi-stage uh, tumorogenesis model in which the bovine papilloma oncogene uh, elic dermal fibrosarcoma. So, so uh, they have been uh, uh, analyzed for the angiogenesis BP1 uh, oncogenes in transgenic mice which carry the BP1 oncogenic genes. So normally the initial normal dermis is initially converted into the state of a mild fibroblastomia. So which is uh, which is seen as ro local small accumulation of fibroblasts, right? So then, uh, so it is here not much of angiogenesis, but here you can clearly see uh, the angiogenesis uh, uh, coming up and it is uh, in which is marked by dense arrays of uh, here in this stage you have the, there is increase of pro more number of uh, fibrobla fibroblast cells, but and at the same time hyperproliferation and you see the angiogenesis in the subsequent stage. And further, further on, this is to the squamous uh, with the emergence of squamous carcinoma, there is all increase in uh, of your uh, fibroblast and there is again your increase in um, of your uh, angiogenesis. So, even in the third model also, you know, they have been able to show that um, the, uh, it, this has been uh, the basal keratinocytes were progressively transformed here in the normal squamous epithelium here. Here you have the basal keratinoids which are progressively transformed into squamous cell carcinoma here by human HPV oncogene, uh, HPV 16 oncogenes. So you recollect back when we were discussing the basic uh, uh, basics of ca cancer, we were really highlighted how the HPV 16 is playing the role of an uh, 16 can be the uh, oncogene. Here in this particular see uh, here also you can clearly see that in the hyperplasia then here also in the dysplasia. So, just before progressing into the uh, the angiogenesis uh, angiogenic switch is on in a very very at a very critical stage. So, it not necessarily it is on only in the carcinoma stage in the towards the end stage in all the three mo models if you see you know. So, there is uh, uh, the, they have revealed that becomes activated during the early stages itself. So, even in the early stages of the tumor development itself the angiogenesis switch is on and uh, so the, thereby this is a very rate limiting step in the pathway to many solid tumors. So, now we have seen in the mouse model. So, now is it applicable in the human model. So, for example, uh, so here they, uh, here I have uh, shown both, you know, from the breast cancer, the breast ductal epithelium uh, from the, which arises from the ductal epithelium of the cell and then uh, the B is your normal cervical squamous here. Here what do you see? One uh, is like, uh, can, uh, can you see what happens in the mouse condition in the human uh, condition also? Yes, here it, uh, they have been able to show this particular group. So, angiogenesis has been detected here also in the pre-neoplastic stage. So, which here for the breast cancers which arise from the ductal epithelium of the breast. So, they, they uh, so basically ductal lesions that are presented to be progenitors. Um, so, they are like uh, suppose the moment there is a uh, increase in uh, there is an alteration or there is uh, there is a pathway which leads to aberrancy. So, for, uh, there is hyperplasia, dysplasia. Uh, here you have the angiogenic carcinoma uh, in situ and then your invasive carcinoma. Here also this uh, they have switched on 
angiogenesis uh, which you can clearly see by uh, there is a lot of abundant new capillaries. So, this is an uh, here also it is in the early stage and whereas an angiogenic uh, carcinoma in situ is an intermediate uh, stage between carcinoma in situ and invasive cancer. So, this is also very 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 important uh, step here. So, now even in your uh, uh, normal uh, cervical squamous epithelium, here you have carcinoma CIN1, CIN2 and then followed by your invasive carcinoma. So, what happens here? Here also there is a, an increase in new, a modest, a small increase in new vessel identity is evident in CIN. Here you see a small number, but whereas when it comes to CIN2, uh, there is um, increase in uh, angiogenesis or the new vessel density is here you can see it more. But whereas when it is invasive carcinoma you see there is a lot of abundant um, vessels. So, thereby is, uh, so, so th uh, the, the, this angio here you can see this angiogenic switch is uh, from a vascular quiescence. So, this is there is no vascularization. So, here we call it as vascular quiescence or your vascularization is in a quiet stage to a sustained neo vascularization. So, we can clearly see how this transformation is happening. So, here this gives a complete nice model here how the tumor cells then you have your uh, uh, no normal cells and then you have your vascular uh, cells and then you have your immune cells you know. So, this is a typical a tumor micro environment. So, which we will be discussing in later on in the further course. So, now how does all this will be uh, will uh, will really try to see for the survival of this particular tumor cells. In the absence of new vasculature suppose you do not need a new vasculature when the tumor growth is normally not more than 1 to 2 millimeter cube. So, the tumors will obtain nutrients from the nearby blood vessels and all that. But as this number is increasing and increasing you know beyond the cells grow beyond a restrict, uh, restricted size you know they require this uh, their vasculation network to be extended. So, this you know and this angiogenic switch is what is uh, clearly determines the tumor progression and here uh, they have come up with a balance hypothesis for this particular angiogenic cease. So, as I mentioned that um, there is the normally quiescent vasculature to sprout uh, can be activated. So, you have the regular vasculature which is activated by your uh, regular activators such as your FGF, your FG, BFGF and your VEGF. Uh, so, by this uh, uh, that uh, that will uh, change the relative balance of indu inducers. So, once they are activators the inducers may keep the switch off. So, this uh, inducers will go on to put on the angiogenic switch and uh, they will uh, so, so may so they will f further see the uh, process for they will ensure the transition from the avascular stage to the angiogenic phase is going on. So, and uh, so this is the initial stage in the this is a very good step in the very preliminary step in the for the tumor progression. So, you have so again you know um, sup suppose you either reduce the inhibitor concentration for example, your thrombospondin by loss of a tumor suppressor gene or by increasing the activator levels example for induction of your VEGF by hypoxia you can change the balance and activate this switch leading to growth of new blood vessels. Thus, the angiogenic program is switched on in response to hypoxia which together with the lack uh, with the lack of nutrients. So, note two important factors your hypoxia and nutrients they promote the expression of inflammatory signals and cytokines that recreate the vascular cells for tumor uh, for tumor uh, vessel plexus formations. So, hypoxia uh, so as I mentioned hypoxia triggers the transcription of several genes that are key mediators for angiogenic process such as your VEGF and your PGDF your plated uh, derived growth factors. So, to continue further you know uh, so for after once the angiogenesis is activated tumor cells they have to go through undergo numerous genetic and epigenetic rearrangements for them to grant to the angiogenic potential for both tumor growth and later metastasis. So, so there have been they have done a lot of experiments to show that lack of vascular network leads to 
tumor. So, if there is no uh, vascular network, there is uh, the, the tumor, uh, there is tumor apoptosis or necrosis, therefore, the, thereby highlighting the uh, importance of vasculature for tumor trimming. So, what happens the angiogenic depends on the dynamic balance between your positive uh, proangiogenic and negative anti-angiogenic factors which we have seen before which control vascular homeostasis. So, it is very very important to maintain the uh, vascular homeostasis. So, usually in the normal condition the base is towards uh, the uh, balance is shifted towards negative regulation of angiogenic process. So, thus maintaining the the quiescence or the status quo of the vasculature. So, now, uh, so suppose during the first steps of tumorogenesis, what happens? High levels of strong angiogenic uh, inducers such as VEGF and your, your uh, FGF, they are released into the tumor ecosystem. VEGF is, re is regarded as your uh, is regarded as the initiator and has been found to be in, uh, expressed in many cancer uh, many cancer types in response to different stimuli. Uh, so, uh, other than uh, hypoxia or uh, hypoglycemia and growth factors and even uh, and even there is uh, the increase of your uh, MIC also you know they it will increase your production of uh, wedge of 10 fold levels. So, counterbalancing positive and negative G signals. So, this is how you know you have different different uh, um, proangiogenic factors as I have mentioned before which are coming up which will aid in the increase in size of your tumor cell mass or to the neoplasia. So, this angiogenesis initiated uh, signals are exemplified by VEGF and uh, acidic and basic that is your um, fibroblast growth factors that is your AB growth of uh, FGF which we have seen before. So, each binds to the uh, transmembrane you they these in turn bind to your transmembrane uh, tyrosine uh, kinase receptors which are displayed by the endothelial cells. So, this is again you know um, a very important uh, slide which will show how is your angiogenic switch is it in the on stage or is it in the oh, sorry off stage or in the on stage. In each of these arrows the, uh, the arrows can you see the small arrows they highlight uh, they highlight the representative vessels. Uh, so, in the quiet stage you can see the, you know so for example, in the mouse eyelids uh, here you know. So, show, so mouse eyelids here they show the full full of uh, uh, proliferating uh, beta cells. They there is no absolutely or very quiet uh, vasculature. So, like a normal scenario, but whereas when it comes here, you know, you can see that there is a new vessel uh, growth. So, the here you can see the small uh, arrows. So, that is here uh, with the hallmark experience. So, this is a hallmark of vascular, uh, the, the, there is uh, appearance of vasculature here. So, now here the human uh, breast panels here which shows a carcinoma in C2 left with the here this is with the carcinoma in C2 and here in the normal uh, duct associated va va vasculature uh, there is there is nothing. But here whereas when you see here you know there is extensive neovascularization here can you see the uh, arrows being pointed out. Coming here also again with the mouse dermis you know which show pre vascular uh, pre vascular my it is in the it is in the prevascular there my mild fibroblast fibromatosis very mild with very few you know vessels deep in the dermis whereas in the right you know it is a very aggressive fibromatosis can you see here with large capillaries here they are spread throughout can you see the arrows and they are thickened in the dermal layer. Coming here you know is the human cervix you know this is a very uh, classic example here. So, what is it um, the, what is it happen here? The normal tissue has vessels deep in the stroma here can you see this vessels here can you see them there it is in the very deep in the stroma whereas uh, whereas in the synthry lesion as you can see you know the, the it has a attracted there is a dense arrays of new capillaries are uh, distributed which we uh, this is an HPV 16 epiderm uh, induced uh, epidermal dysplasia where cap capillaries are distributed throughout the dermis. So, just a one quick slide on you know how VEGF you know 
uh, that is a vascular endothelial growth factor that is secreted by tumor and stromal cells. Uh, it is also secreted by your uh, endothelial cells and fibroplasts. It has multiple uh, functions in the tumor micro micro environment which involve the uh, ability of VEGF to interact with VEGF uh, uh, receptors that are expressed on different cell types as I mentioned before. So, this acts as a primary stimulus as I have been telling you in my last all 3-4 slides for angiogenesis which is the process you know to stimulate the signaling pathways. This here this pro process of angiogenesis is the stimulate the sim signaling pathways that induce the proliferation and the migration of endothelial cells and their ability as a, you recollect in last 3-4 slides back you know where I showed you one slide these cells to degrade and remodel the uh, extracellular matrix that is your ECM. So, these processes culminate in sprouting angiogenesis and the formation of blood vessels. So, VEGF can also increase the vascular uh, permeability which results in the deposition of uh, provisional fibrin matrix that triggers the formation of desmoplasia, desmoplastic stroma. So, what does VEGF do? It also function as a crema attractant to recruit T regs, your T regulatory, regulatory T cells you know. So, that uh, inhibit an auto anti tumor immune response. So, then uh, tumor fibroplasts also secrete, uh, see they also secrete. So, this goes in an autocrine uh, fashion. So, uh, it will uh, first in turn trigger the fibroplast and again they in turn uh, secrete um, VEGF. So, so, all this you know, so uh, uh, again one more important factor is your neurophilin you know that is expressed on tumor fibroplasts may contribute to nuclear tumor growth. So, this again go, contributes to tumor growth by uh, nucleating fibro, uh, fibronectin fibril formation. But uh, uh, so, this is how the veget targets the different, uh, it, it will enable the vascular perm permeability. So, after seeing so much of uh, uh, tumor angiogenesis process definitely there are inhibition strategies. So, it can be so the, the because it is a complex uh, it is a complex uh, angiogenesis process you know it can be uh, inhibited at different levels. For example, uh, you know your direct uh, vessel signaling inhibition approaches include your um, your VEGF, uh, VEGF uh, ligand uh, inhibitors, your VEGF receptor inhibitors which are important and other growth factor inhibitors you know um, uh, that are released by the uh, stromal or tumor uh, uh, tumor cells. So, you even you even have your uh, TKI inhibitors that block and and also that uh, um, uh, that block endothelial and pericyte cell uh, activation your tyrosine kinase uh, inhibitors here. So, these are all you know we have seen how this endothelial cell activation, peri pericyte activation they are very crucial steps you know for the uh, for the process of angiogenesis to be completed. So, novel anti, uh, anti angiogenic uh, strategies are directed towards uh, your EPC recruitment, your endothelial progenital uh, cell uh, recruitment inhibition and so which occurs via your uh, stromal derived factor or chemokine receptor type 4 signaling blockade. So, then again uh, you and your extracellular matrix, matrix remodeling inhibition. So, considering all this contribution of your uh, EPCs to tumor angiogenesis and metagenesis. So, blo blocking of your EPC activation is a recently explored strategy for uh, new blood vessel and metastatic abrogation or stopping or uh, abortion whatever you call it to so th this is how this is uh, achieved. So, you are having different kind of inhibitors. Now, we move on to another um, very very important uh, hallmark pathway of cancer pathway which is activating invasion and metastasis. So, first thing let us come back to very very important part you know in the whole cancer biology very important word is metastasis. So, first you know the the word of metastasis was coined way back in 1829 by Jean Claude. Um, so, where he said that you know the transfer of disease from one organ or part to another, but not directly connected to that thing. 
So if you see the whole uh, process, you know, so they came up with one particular hypothesis, you know. So first thing, uh, it's like if you see from uh, 1830, so I'm dividing this whole timeline into two slides. So from 1832, 1955, uh, so first how, you know, I'll explain slowly how uh, each term. So the first term was coined, then how this uh, uh, tumor uh, first suggestion they came up uh, in uh, 1838, right? Like how the tumor dissemination is determined by some mechanical. Then they came up with a seed and soil uh, hypothesis for organs with disseminated uh, cancer in 1899. So then uh, slowly they went on to say that metastasis is uh, uh, here. The first murine model of metastasis was developed in 1913. And then uh, here, uh, if you see, you know, uh, the role of cellular adhesiveness in metastasis and uh, distribution of embolic tumor cells was uh, given in 1932. Then they, they said, see, it's a slowly stepwise, you know. Then how cells adapted to um, SIRTS growth persistent parent tumor have increased malignant phenotype. So this uh, like, you know, and then, uh, you know, so, so whatever, you know, um, it's been a slow understanding process of this very complex system. So, what did they do first, you know, in 1888, the English surgeon Stephen Paget, he identified the role of host tumor uh, interactions and uh, uh, interactions and he addressed the question, what is that decides, you know, uh, that organ shall suffer in case of disseminated cancer disease. So, this he, uh, he has given that. So, then uh, he concluded that remote organs cannot be altogether passive or indifferent regarding embolism. And so, then he came up with an, uh, uh, a very principle called seed and soil principle, which states that when a plant go, goes to seed, you get the seeds are carried in all directions, but they can only live and grow if they fall on their own congenial soil. So, 40 years later, you know, somebody called Ewing, you know, he challenged the seed and soil hypothesis. He proposed that, you know, so 40 years later, in 1928, Ewing challenged the seed and soil hypothesis. He proposed that the uh, mechanical forces and circulatory patterns between the primary tumor and the secondary site, where site, they accounted for organ specificity. So, although this, this further on studies, you know, by some fiddler and co-workers, co they showed that all the tumor cells traffic through the vasculature of all organs, metastasis selectively develop, develops in some congenial organs. So, thus, they, there is uh, the, in the research in the uh, early study, uh, 70s and 80s, you know, they stimulated into the pathobiology, uh, there is a lot of research in the pathobiology of metastasis. Uh, so, they by they came up with a term called Nishi for or a local microenvironment or now what we call uh, tumor microenvironment for the primary tumor and the metastasis local. Here, the, they uh, during the 1970s and 90, early 80s, they provided insight into the uh, tumor uh, biological heterogeneity and metastasis phenotype. So, uh, thus the outgrowth of metastatic lesion requires, it develops a very important vascular network that evades and this metastasis should be able to evade your host immune response and respond to organ specific patterns that influence their growth. One critical process in the whole thing is that, you know, it is like the cells can invade the host trauma, penetrate blood vessels and enter the circulation to produce secondary metastasis again, you know, the so called metastasis of metastasis which we will see. Now, here if you see, you know, from the late 70s and 1980s, you know, so as I said, there is the word Nishi which has been coined. So, here from 1960s, they have shown chromatic, uh, how the 1965 chromium labeled tumor cells used in dissemination studies. Then you have the, uh, how even if you are enzymatic manipulation of a cell so, so surfaces, you know, it affects your uh, uh, metastatic potential. Then lymphatic metastasis is distinguished from 
hematogenous. So, there are two body fluids, oh, I am sure you all will agree you have the lymph and the blood, right. So, how can, so they were able to distinguish here. Then here again, you know, uh, here in 1970s they have shown that uh, metastasis can even come from survival of few tumor cells. So, that is, this is a very, very important uh, issue in all the existing cancer, modern cancer uh, 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 treatment where the uh, the, from the primary, the metastasis will be, may become more aggressive. So, even very one breakthrough came in 1973, you know when human, uh, uh, they were able to show that human tumors metastasis in thymic uh, deficient uh, uh, nude mice. Here and then uh, again, uh, you know, they were showing able to show the in vivo selection of tumor cells for, uh, suppose in, uh, they were able to select the in vivo cells for metastatic potential. So, this is again another breakthrough which came in 1973. And then a metastatic cascade was proposed for sequential events in uh, disseminated cancer. So, then uh, how is organ specificity like for your lung, kidney, brain, breast, you know, its uh, specificity of metastasis is determined by your cell adhesion. So, then uh, again, you know, the clonal evolution of uh, tumor, tumor cell population was uh, evolved, you know. So, this also we will discuss in the coming slides, you know. And then how, uh, you know, it was shown that how invasion and metastasis are uh, linked to metastatic cells which produce uh, proteolytic enzymes. And then are all this metastatic neoplasm are they uh, clonal or are they heterogeneous? So, this also they were able to show that metastasis um, has is an heterogeneous population. It is not like a single gene population. So, this is exactly what I was telling you. So, how you have your this, uh, this, uh, this hypothesis they suggested that towards malignancy is um, a tumor uh, a progression towards malignancy is uh, accompanied by heightened genetic instability of the progressing cells which we all are aware. Come back to our first class, you know, where we have uh, uh, shown the genetic instability and then with uh, your uh, Darwin se selection. Do you recollect that, you know, only the survival of the fittest, supposing the more mutations happen, they will be L, L, so the normal is preferred over the mutant, right? So, what happens? So, you in the metastasis uh, uh, populations resistant to normal uh, hemostatic growth factors, chemotherapy fit in, in intervention and uh, environmental Restraint. So, this all this metastatic population is resistant to all this particular normal signals. So, this is how it goes. So, the here what happens is like, uh, uh, so they measure the some uh, the uh, siphon and fiddler, they measure the mutation rates of paid metastatic and non-metastatic cloned uh, lines isolated from, from different many murine tumors. So, they have found that highly uh, metastatic cells are phenotypically less stable and then their benign counterparts. So, the, the, the mutation rate for the highly metastatic clones was higher, very, very higher fold. So, the metastatic clones are very high, high uh, have a very high rate of mutations uh, than the non-metastatic or poorly metastatic clones. So, this slides will uh, give uh, the basically, so it is a prelude to the previous slide, so to the next slide. So, uh, what are the steps in metastatic process? After the initial transforming event, you know, the growth of neoplastic cells is progressive and frequently slow. So, what happens? Uh, as I said mentioned, vascularization is required for tumor mass to excrete for a small, uh, from a small tumor cell side to a, from of 1 mm to 2 mm diameter. So, there is a, a lot of uh, synthesis and uh, secretion of angiogenesis uh, factors that have role in establishing a vascular network within the surrounding host uh, tissue. So, local invasion of the host trauma by tumor cells and occur by uh, multiple uh, mechanisms including but not limited to thin wall uh, venules and lymphatic muscles both of which offer little resistance to tumor cell invasion. So, circulation of this emboli within the vascular both hematologic and lymphatic survival of tumor cells that traffic through the circulation and arrest in the capillary bed. So, then you have the extravasation. So, all the steps are very, very important in the metastatic process. So, then once this uh, vascularization is, uh, is uh, uh, accomplished and the host defenses against uh, host, I mean they are able to uh, modulate the host immune response, you know, there is again the reinitiation of these process of the development of metastasis from metastasis.
So the key change that occurs during cancer associated EMT or your uh, epithelial meth uh, chymal transition is, is the reduced expression of or the loss of the E catheter. So this is a very very important pro molecule. So uh, although there are multiple epithelial proteins but which are down regulated in uh, uh, this is like E catheter is reduced expression. So this is like then as I explained in the previous uh, slide. So this is all the uh, different uh, uh, steps of the metastasis. After the initial transforming event the growth of uh, is progressive. So now we can see that there is a secretion of, uh, um, after the secretion of angiogenesis factors that have a uh, cr uh, cr critical role in establishing a vascular network with the host surrounding tissue. So the local invasion of the host trauma by tumor cells can occur by multiple uh, mechanisms. So like how we can see here, like uh, so detachment and uh, embolism of this particular aggregates, tumor cell aggregates may be uh, increased in size via interaction with hemopoietic uh, cells with the circulation. So uh, circulation of these um, emboli within the vascular both uh, hematologic and lymphatic. So now survival of the tumor cells that uh, are trafficked. So how are they once they are trafficked into the circulation through, uh, uh, so through your uh, both your lymphatic and the hematologic uh, circulation system you know. So once they are doing they are ready to metastasis in other organs. Uh, as mentioned in the previous slide this is how the whole uh, sequential process of metastasis is. So once the tumor uh, mass exceeds 1 to 2 mm quick there is angiogenesis and then there is the motility and uh, invasion. So here the key change that occurs during cancer associated is um, one of the key uh, factor is your EMT epithelial mesenchymal transition and this is evidenced by, uh, uh, re by reduced expression or loss of your uh, E catherine protein along with other uh, many epithelial proteins which are also uh, down regulated. So now after this particular uh, multicell uh, aggregates you know there is a lot of um, uh, then you have your vascularization. So there is uh, transport of this particular uh, um, aggregates that is your emboli if, uh, of your tumor cell emboli to uh, so through, through the blood circulation or through your uh, lymphatic uh, system you know. And then, uh, then again they go into and penetrate into the uh, into organ parenchyma. So the basically the, they they adhere in other uh, particular uh, organs, and there they response to uh, micro tumor micro environment. Then again another uh, tumor cell proliferation and angiogenesis occurs, and then again metastasis. So once again they have established here, it happens a metastasis of metastasis. So another very important uh, hallmark which we are going to go and other is like you know a tumor promoting inflammation. So this we will be discussing in our next session that is your molecular uh, uh, basis of car uh, cardiogenic. So where I will talk in detail about the inflammation. So what happens is this is how uh, you know the white blood cells in tumors they provide the first clue that inflammation is linked to cancer. And there is uh, a lot of uh, lymphoreticular infiltrate which has re reflected uh, the origin of cancer at sites of chronic um, inflammation. So tumors can uh, secrete growth factors and cytokines that result in the uh, expansion and mobilization of uh, your uh, myeloid progenitors from the marrow with trafficking to various extramedular sites including your spleen. Uh, spleen, um, liver, lungs and uh, primary and metastatic tumor lesions. So these committed, uh, uh, committed uh, myeloid uh, progenitors or what we call them as your CMPs, they can mature either into your dendritic cells, my myeloid derived suppressor cells and macrophages including your tumor associated macrophages and they become activated or paralyzed within the tumor microenvironment. So these heterogeneous cells include your uh, pro, so there will be a complete of heterogeneous cells which include progenitor cells, immature cells, um, mature and activated cells. So depending upon the infiltrate substrate and the extent of maturation and activation these cells can be a 
critical component and regulator of your uh, vascular genesis um, and angiogenesis and suppose what uh, and then there is tumor uh, uh, infiltration or tumor growth or sometimes you know uh, it can even be a tumor regression or no growth. So, tumor is something what earlier you know they postulated that it could be a wound that does not heal. So, we should really be able to show that you know can a wound heal or not a wound not healing can it how does so now what exactly a cancer cell does is it will modulate the wound healing mechanisms for its own proliferation or for its successful establishment. So, basically a tumors hijack the wound healing repair programs. So, how do you compare a chronic wound and a tumor wound? Here between you know to be very frank you know there are many similarities between a cancer tumor, uh, cancerous tumor and the process of wound healing here. So, both here you can see how you know uh, very well the top is your wound healing and here is a tumor. How both involve the growth and survival and migration of cells. Here you can see there is lot of uh, recruitment of cells and they require new blood vessels. Both of them require new blood vessels. Now, all these processes are controlled by growth factors and again signaling molecule. Please recollect your earlier slides. So, just as the immune cells gather near a site of in, uh, injury you, here you know uh, to secrete growth factors to uh, be nine for a tissue repair you know tumors can also surround themselves with so they also surround themselves with immune cells that secrete the same growth factors to control uh, for, to promote their uncontrolled growth. So, as I said they hijack your wound repair mechanisms. So, what happens uh, usually uh, uh, the wound healing you know if you see it is by a by several uh, subsequential steps after injury what it happens here is um, uh, which is referred to as inflammation or uh, proliferation resolution and then you have your uh, remodeling where it is completely healed. So, immune cells are playing a key regulator in wound repair pro pro uh, program. So, in the neutrophils kill the microbes and uh, you, so you have the uh, uh, my macrophage factor ph phagocytizing the apoptosis neutrophils while skin resident or infiltrating T cells you know like they produce IL-7 and then IL-22 TNFL to amplify the host defense mechanism. So, during your proliferation stage the macrophage switch to anti inflammatory phenotype that is your M sub or M sub uh, M sub macrophages and N sub neutrophils for tumor associated neutrophils so that is called your TANs. So, what the TANs uh, T regs and other immunocells may help to attenuate the so here the inflammation um, response is attenuated and the uh, this will help in the uh, resolution and tissue modeling. So, chronic uh, wounds get trapped here many if it is a chronic wound they will get trapped in the inflammation phase exacerbate and thus hinder. So, they will there will be uh, there is a hindrance of tissue repair in the chronic wound healer. But tumors on the other hand you know what do they do they hijack at this particular proliferating and the remodeling pro pro program and provide signals that can create a continuous angiogenic and uh, immunosuppressive environment here that enables to uh, that here the angiogenic and the immunosuppressed what will it enable the tumors to the, it escapes the immunosurveillance. So, tumor rep remain in the proliferative phase upon the onset of after the onset of angiogenesis you know they continue to divide and divide. So, uh, and so, so the therefore it remains in the uh, upon the onset of uh, angiogenic uh, angiogenesis. Here, please keep in mind tumors will remain in the proliferative stage here at this particular state. So, anti angiogenic immunotherapies induce an inflammation program in tumors that reawakens and uh, boosts an anti tumor program response. So, so, and uh, so that therefore, the goal is to create a homeostatic situation in which tumor cells are eliminated and a normal tissue architecture is 
achieved. So two new hallmarks were added in the next generation of hallmarks of cancers. So one of them is the reprogramming of energy metabolism. So one very key important uh, factor, factor which we will be discussing is your Warburg effect. So which is an anomalous characteristic of uh, an, uh, cancer cell uh, energy metabolism. So what happens here in an aerobic conditions normal cells first uh, uh, pro process glucose first into pyruvate uh, via, uh, via the glycosols and there, uh, thereafter via uh, via the oxidative phosphorylation to carbon dioxide in the mitochondria. Under anaerob anaerobic conditions, glycolysis is favored and relatively little pyruvate is, disp is dispatched to the um, oxygen consuming mitochondria. So, in, in the scenarios of the chronic uncontrolled cell proliferation, which is the representative of uh, neoplasia. Um, uh, so, not only de uh, but, uh, but there is there has to be adjustment of energy metabolism in order to uh, promote cell growth and division. So, now as I mentioned normal cells process first into uh, glucose, uh, first to pyruvate via glycolysis in the cytosol and there, uh, therefore to uh, and thereafter uh, to carbon dioxide in the mitochondria. So, Warburg first observed an anomalous characteristic of ca cancer uh, uh, metabolism that even in the presence of uh, oxygen, cancer cells can reprogram their energy production. So, re uh, that is their uh, glucose metabolism by limiting their energy production largely to glycolysis. So, the, the thereby le leading to a stage that has been termed aerobic glycolysis. So, please note, note even in the presence of oxygen, cancer cells can reprogram their glucose metabolism and thus their, inner, uh, thus their energy production which is called aerobic glycolysis. So, the existence of this metabolic switch has been uh, substantiated in many in further on by many uh, experiments. Such uh, reprogramming is uh, uh, is, uh, is that must be compensate for their 18 fold lower uh, uh, efficiency of AT produ ATP production which is efforted by the glycolysis relative to mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation. So, this is a very like this is called the Warburg uh, effect. So, now what happens here is uh, it is like um, so there you need to have there is uh, there is the uptake of uh, upregulating of glucose trans uh, transporter such as your GLUT1 which increases the glucose uh, import into the cytoplasm. So, increased uptake and have been documented in many tumor cell types. So, increased uptake and glucose. So, this is like in your uh, pet skitty, you know, there is something called uh, 18 uh, fluorodeoxyglucose, which is a reported dye. So, uh, they make the patient which is, uh, which is a radio labeled analog of glucose. So, this is what there is detected in your uh, pet CT images, what we can clearly see that is like the cancer cells have an uh, high, uh, have an increased uptake of glucose. So, wherever there is increased uptake in particular image. So, they say that for example, your liver there are meds, this is a lung or from the breast uh, lymph node, they see that particular increase in uh, the glucose uptake. So, this is all the evidence of your PET CTs. So, coming back metabolism of uh, cancer pathways is regulated by signaling by pathways related to oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes again. So, p 30 k activates ATK, so back to our pathway which stimulates glucose uptake and the flux by directly controlling your uh, glycolytic enzymes and activating your mTOR. So, then uh, indirectly and which causes metabolic changes by uh, activating your HIF, hypo hypoxia inducing factor protein which activates PDK which inactivates your uh, mitochondrial uh, pyruvate uh, dehydrogenase complex and thereby inhibits the entry of pyruvate into TCA cycle. So, it is a very interesting uh, link of signaling pathways uh, uh, which is related to oncogenes and your tumor suppressors genes. So, basically what does it do? Um, basically metabolism of cancer cells is regulated by the signaling pathways which is related to the oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes as we all know. So, here P30 K activates AKT which stimulates glucose uptake flux which stimulates your glucose uptake flux 
and flux by directly controlling the glycolytic enzymes and by activating mTOR. So, mTOR uh, indirectly causes metabolic changes by activating HIF. HIF activates your PDK which inactivates the mitochondrial uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and thereby inhib inhibits the entry of pyruvate into your TCA cycle. P53 suppresses glycolysis by increasing the expression of TIGAR supporting the expression of your P10 and promoting oxidative phosphorylation by your IC2. So, this is like, uh, so there is this increase in transcription and of your glycolytic enzymes which and also involved in the gl glutamine metabolism. So, the whole uh, can, uh, there is altered me me metabolism to the transformation of normal cells to cancer cells and it is believed to be uh, this particular glucose uh, metabolism alteration is conserved in most tumors. One more important hallmark here which we will really have be discussing in the uh, one uh, towards the end that is your uh, immunosurveillance or your immunotherapy. Here how cancer cells evade immune destruction. All through we have been talking about several you know how the cancer cells gets over your uh, tumor cells how do they evolve. So, they will modulate their immune uh, destru uh, destruction mechanisms. So, the, or they evade the immune destruction mechanisms. So, tumor infiltrating your immune cells are critical players in the tumor microenvironment which modulate the cancer cell functions. So, they are uh, usually tumor inf infiltrating uh, are the immuno cells they are highly heterogenic you know and plastic and may either suppress uh, cancers or provide support for tumor growth. So, there are uh, uh, you have your uh, tumor uh, uh, there is a wide range of studies have shown light on how tumor associated macrophages they are one more important very important factors cells your dendritic cells your neutrophils your mast cells natural killer cells and lymphocytes contribute to the uh, they all contribute to the extraction for the establishment of several hallmarks of cancer but and they have become for the basis of uh, successful uh, cancer uh, immunotherapy. But here if you can really see uh, see here you know uh, how uh, the different uh, uh, cancer associated uh, fibroplastic and your like each of this particular immune cells you know they are contributing to different uh, hallmarks of cancer like your tumor uh, associated vascular uh, uh, cells, your cancer associated fibroplastic cells, your infil infiltrating immune cells, you know. Uh, so, uh, like just come back to our first slide, you know, how you have the uh, reductionist view and the heterogenic view, you know. So, how the uh, each one is like now at the end of this particular session, you know, it is not like, you know, one particular event, I will have only deregulating cellular en uh, energetics. So, only this hallmark altered, can it go for cancer? No. So, you have each one of this uh, uh, hallmark, you know, playing in its own role, you know, or, or it is just like the cancer cell will play through this particular hallmark or particular like inducing angiogenesis which is a definite pre or it will resist, resist cell death you know like the program apoptosis where we have clearly seen you know how does it resist all this. So, this particular all this you know it particularly evades yeah, so uh, the immune destruction. So, this is also we will be seeing all this in particular details in the uh, towards the end of our uh, course and now. So, now we have studied so much about our hallmarks. Now, does not seem is it in me you have such everything is so well defined yeah. You know what are the growth suppressors, we know what are the immune, uh, uh, what are the proliferating signals. If now, we know that we have TKI inhibitors, now I am giving an EJFR. Chalo, everything is, is it such a simple journey? No. So, you it is like a therapeutic targeting of the hallmarks of cancer is a very, very, very well uh, tar approach for targeted therapy. So, for example, not particular, so now in the drug discovery programs, you know, so now they are able to identify the drugs exactly. You have your kinases or you have your tyrosine kinase inhibitors, where exactly are they following. So, now like for example, your immune therapy, you know, so you are, you are having your immune activating anti-CTLA MA4 monoclonal antibodies. So, that they particular target this. Then you have your telomerase inhibitors, which will target this particular hallmarks. So, then you have your uh, 
anti-inflammatory drugs your then your inhibitors of VEGF signaling these are all also given with another particular so for example your PARP inhibitors so which uh, will uh, serve to uh, uh, in the uh, work towards the genomic instability and mutation and then your uh, aerobic glycolysis like which deregulate uh, cellular energetics so, this uh, drugs that inhibit, uh, interfere with each of the hallmark capabilities and hallmark enabling processes have been developed. So, there are many of these drugs, many of them are already in trials or in clinical testings for they are putting into many like for example, your EGFR uh, uh, inhibitors, there are like your first generation, second generation, third generation EGFR inhibitors for uh, lung cancer. So, there are been very much in uh, treating in certain, they are helping in certain treating the certain forms of cancer. Thank you.